Hello guys, come back to the next part. Now in this, we'll continue with the uh, we'll continue with variables, but uh, let me do some changes in my code now. So, where's my code? Where's my code? Yeah, here. Now, so we have demonstrated our code with int variable, right? So we have a variable called as num1, which is of type int. But what if if I make it as float? Okay. So float suppose decimal point. Decimal points like you can say it's 3.4 or 6.4 or 3.3 okay and let me just remove this line now what should the answer should be it's, it should be 9.7 right so we have a float which is 6.4 and we have something called as 3.3 now if you if you know about uh, c c++ it supports a default float format right so when you add these two numbers the output should be it should be it should be an error right it's because it says possibly lossy conversion from double to float it's because by default in java by default in java any real number is double all real numbers are double so when i say it as double and now if i compile this now it's getting compiled right because by default all decimal values are double now if i run this is java add and you're getting 9.7 so when you talk about double double take 16 bytes right uh, sorry double take 8 bytes right so the problem with double is it gives you lots number of zeros after your decimal point right so if you don't have a decimal uh, lots of no zeros after your decimal point you will put some with zeros right so unfortunately you're wasting your memory but Java supports double. By default, Java goes with double. But what if you have to use float? What if you want to use float? In case if you want to use float, you have to use something called as F here. It's which signifies don't go for double. It will signify this number. Don't go for double. It's a float value. So when you want to save it in float format, you have to use something called as F here. Now if I compile it, it's getting it's getting compiled no errors right and now if i run this it's 9.7 output will be same the difference is the amount of memory it will take is four bytes if you specify double it will take eight bytes if you're specifying float it will take four bytes right so that's the advantage of using float okay so this is this is about float and double uh let me do some experiment with uh with with something new okay. we'll talk about cache now char is a type of data, data type in which you can save if you if, it, if I create a variable called as C in which I can store a character right a character can be any keyword on your keyboard so it can be a capital A it can be a small a it can be a dollar it can be a number it can be everything right so let me store a value A now all this character should be in a single quote and let me just print this value here so if i print c and if i run this oh it's okay let me clear this screen to compile it's java c add dot java and the output is a right now question arise how did this number its value this uh, this uh, value get stored in your computer Normally, when we talk about computer, computer understand only one language called as binary, right? So there is some there is some logic of converting a uh, character into a binary digits, or you can say bits, and that conversion takes with the help of ASCII code, right? So there is something called as ASCII code. Now, to work with ASCII code, what ASCII code exactly is? It's a it's a val it's an integer representation of your character. Okay, so if your character is A, capital A, the ASCII conversion of character A is 65. If you want to check it, it's very simple. Uh, let me just let me just do some uh, let do some magic. Now, what we can do is we can convert this char into int. So there's something called type casting. So if I cast this character with int, it means when you print this value of C, it will try to convert that that value into integer value. So if I say, if I compile this, 
And if I run this, now you can see the value is 65. What it done is, this, this value A is converted into the rep uh, equal representation of its integer value. So we have a mapping of character and a, a value. And that value for the capital A is 65. If you want to check for small a, just, just compile it again and run. It's 97, right? Yeah, you can even check the character for sem for number for semicolon. Right, so when you compile, no errors. Running is 58, right? You have ASCII value for everything. In fact, for space, you have ASCII value. So that's the amazing part, right? That's how you do, right? So for all these characters, we have some ASCII value. Now, ASCII value normally starts with zero, and right? it ends at it's end at one twenty-seven, I guess. So, what to to rep to, uh, to represent this, what we can do is uh, we'll we'll do some reverse part. What we can do is we can say one twenty-four. I want to get the ASCII uh, character value of one twenty-four. So, what we can do is we can specify here char. So, we are doing the, we are doing the reverse part. From value, we are getting the ASCII value. I'm not using this part this time. I'm not using this part, right? Still, we'll keep it there. No harm. So compile. No error. Output is pipe. So this is your uh, straight line, or you can say pipe. So 124 represented by pipe. If I have 67, it should be C. I'm not wrong. It's capital C. Let me check it out. Yeah, it's capital C, right? So. So you can convert this ASCII value to character also. But if I represent a number like 564, and if I do try to do that, and output is question mark. Oh, so it's getting repeated. So it's getting repeated, but you have uh, when you talk about question mark. Let me use question mark here and. Yeah, for question mark it is 63 right so it's as simple as that it's uh, you, you you have uh, a number for every character so this is about uh, some variables the remaining part we'll see in next session thank you so much